This is a real world. It's not Ready Player One. This is the real world. One problem I have when I explain to friends and relatives Bitcoin is still that they feel guilty for, for using so much uh, energy. The climate of Earth has changed four degrees up, eight degrees down um, in the last ice age period. Stop this bloody Sierra Club bullshit where you're aiming to kill people. You're a fucking murderer because every person who doesn't get access to electricity, doesn't get power, doesn't get that growth, is someone who has a shorter life. If double spends were so easy, we would already have seen it on a massive scale because either you can do it, then you do it multiple times, yep. th thousand times, or you can't do it. Yeah, yeah, setting up my own wallet and saying which one succeeded or whatever else is a load of bull. I mean, the truth of the matter in a double spend is you go into a store and you get away with a crime. Not, um, I noticed on my own wallet that I was able to get a um, transaction in because I paid lower fees. Um, the reality is there, that's not what you do with a merchant. The merchant has a fee requirement. If you don't pay it, you haven't paid the transaction. If you go in and you say, I don't want to pay the credit card 3%, um, then Starbucks doesn't give you your coffee. So this is the real world. Uh, one of your most memorable tweets, tweets was recently that you found a fatal flaw with SegWit that you're going to publish in one year. Did you give this one year time so everybody could prepare or why uh, one year delay? I'm giving people time to delay, uh, sorry, to prepare. Uh, I'm not going to just dump everything and have the market crash. It will be bad for everyone, including us. Uh, so um, I think it's unfixable. They maybe think they can find something or see how they go. Um, as for their, if there is one responsible disclosure, well, I don't know if there is a, a responsible disclosure for um, uh, something where it's actually unfixable. So, and uh, usually uh, when I hear from white hat white hat hackers, they communicate with the company, and they, then Microsoft or Google fixes the problem as a zero day flaw. Did you communicate to Bitcoin Core this problem? Uh, one, I don't care, and two, um, they are the flaw with Bitcoin, and three, there isn't a fix. It is segwit. Um, you can't fix it. You have to remove what is Bitcoin to fix it. So, so uh, Bitcoin Core have basically shot themselves in the head um, and they don't realize it yet. Yeah, and it, that's part of what's difficult for most people to understand. For me, it was also, I, I didn't really understand what was happening at that time when they uh, started with the block limit. And when then the block limit was full, it was like out of out of the world, um, and yeah, that that is undescribable. And the normal person really hasn't acknowledged that yet. And I hope we ca we can get uh, mm. like the information out there that the that the current bit or the the current leader of cryptocurrency is deeply flawed now. Well. I would say that the one with the most price, but I wouldn't say that's a leader. I see, yeah, with the, with the highest they're price. They're not leading anything. I mean, uh, they're still running around doing this satellite bullshit. That's actually um, the most everything. interesting thing that they're doing, in my, in my opinion. But... Do you realize they're not even new satellites? They're Rayathon um, uh, satellite devices. And um, when I tweeted out a picture where parts of the world, including China, were locked out in red. There's a reason. Uh, Raythorn aren't allowed to deliver services to North Korea. Raythorn aren't allowed to deliver services to um, uh, Iran. Raythorn um, have negotiated a settlement between America, the US, and um, China. Um, so there are active blocking on all Raythorn signals um, in China. So basically, um uh, it's 
a satellite solution where two uh, where over a third of the world's population are actually banned from using. Um, yeah, that, and it propagates yeah. the whole stupid idea of everyone having to run a node. Yeah, that, it's just that humans, once they have accepted something, they are difficult. It's difficult to convince them of something to use something new. We are still using Skype, although it's not probably the best uh, chat software anymore. Nah, I don't. I don't agree with that one. Um, that's because that's a debatable, arguable thing where um, some people think this is better or whatever else. It does the same function. Um, it's basically cereal boxes. Kellogg's versus Sanitarium versus Nestle versus whatever else. Uh, we're not talking the same thing here. We're talking uh, people calling themselves Bitcoin and Bitcoin. And none of them are Bitcoin anymore. They've gone off in a different path and they have no relation to how it works. None of them understand Bitcoin. The core guys haven't the faintest, foggiest idea of what Bitcoin is. Uh, SBV is simple, remarkably simple. And next year when we put it out there, you'll see how simple it is. Except I'm being an utter, utter bastard in that we're putting a patent on it, uh, which I can do because no one's figured out the simple little trick to it, which is a slap yourself in the face and go, oh, fuck, if you're a dumb, non-technical person, simple trick. And these guys kept thinking about needing fraud proofs and overcomplicating it. I see. Yeah. And if you have had to have give like a projection for the next years, how long does it take for the network effect to play out? And then there will just be one, uh, one Bitcoin and maybe the other coins and will also be out of use. No idea. And But you also understand that the rest of the world grew quite fond of their their net their uh, developer team, and now they have to say goodbye to their old crypto and uh, go back to Maybe the rest of the world. Um, if I randomly select a hundred thousand people, I think I would be lucky to find one who knows what the fuck Bitcoin or uh, anything is. Um, that maybe read a little bit in the paper about this drug money or something like this. Um, and this idea that there are 100 million accounts or whatever else, it's not. There's 100 million coins. It's like saying every five pence um, coin that I have in my, um, my wallet is a new account. It's not. I have a question. Like most business journalists talk about like there's now huge trends, artificial intelligence, blockchain, and gene engineering. Is there a blockchain technology without Bitcoin? Is there an application for blockchain outside of the Bitcoin network? Nope. It's just a Lamport signature scheme. Um, the thing that made Bitcoin Bitcoin was the economics. The technology is 40 years old. Mm -hmm. The thing that made it work is economic security um, people are usually afraid of hacking attacks so I would in my uh, projection I'm an amateur of course I would always uh, assume there would be two or three different versions so with a different architecture so they are not as easily hackable so we d use different operating systems we use Wi-Fi LTE <laughs> and Bluetooth what what do you say to that Uh, they're completely different technologies and what you're talking about actually makes things more fragile. Um, so you're using Wi-Fi, whatever else, uh, that doesn't make you less resilient, uh, less uh, hackable, it makes you more. Uh, each of those is an attack surface. So that's a completely, utterly wrong way of looking at it. Uh, The reality there is uh, majority of people still have um, windows. We're not uh, distributed in that way because everything's connected. Um, if your phone is hacked, then your computer is probably too. If your Windows machine is um, hacked, then so is your Linux machine because they're probably interconnected. The reality here is um, 
nothing to do with the operating system or the software, it's to do with the maintenance and management. Um, I did a paper that I presented in 2011 or 2012 uh, following a whole series, like a thousand different organizations were audited, it was an academic paper. Um, and we looked at the actual uh, cost of compliance versus security and whatever else. And the problem wasn't uh, what people seem to think, it's where you focus your efforts on protecting. And um, the reality is people don't put enough attention on the right areas. They have crappy passwords, um, they don't patch properly. Uh, the, the reality was 99% of um, you know, compromises were stupid little things that uh, anyone could have fixed easily, making sure that your patching is up to date. Um, not allowing um, sort of open browser access to every stupid site you can think of, uh, or at least putting a warning up about them. Um, having antivirus software, those sort of things. Not zero days, not um, uh, all these special attacks or whatever else. Um, the reality is, even from my forensic work, 99.9% .9 of the the break-ins, attacks, and whatever else are really, really simple, stupid things. But um, you find the lowest common denominator in the organization, and um, um, you hand someone a free USB stick um, in the car park with some marketing logos on it and whatever else, and you watch them plug it into their computer. We did that to banks. Ah, so you did real-world testing of uh, penetration testing in the past. Yeah. Mm. I I only thought that would be part of like novels, the USB attack and uh, scenarios, but I didn't know that people actually tested it already. Yeah, I, I used to um, uh, have some. I mean, I used to be involved with the guys at Sands quite a lot, and um, uh, I give a shout out to some of the guys I haven't been in contact with for years, but I know like um, uh, uh, Mr. Stratus there and, and Ed Scotus and. Um, others, um, like the IntelliGuardians crew, uh, yeah, I remember some of the uh, some of the stories those guys got up to were insane. And another astonishing thing for the normal crypto investor was when you were talking about stable coins that there won't be any real stable coins until like a central bank like the Bank of England would step into it and start a stable coin. How do you see like the sharing of tasks that the commodity ledger of Bitcoin does and then this English stablecoin does. Is it like, what kind of coexistence would it be? You create a, a token on top of Bitcoin and allow um, Yen coin and uh, Renminbi coin and uh, US dollar coin and, and cable coin and whatever else to all uh, compete. I see, yeah, fairly simple, yeah. So that's also something I didn't expect that it would run on Bitcoin as well. This the government stable coins. That's interesting. Um, it's the best way. I mean, what people don't seem to understand is um, you can't have a private blockchain. Private blockchain is the same as the silly idea of a private internet. Um, yes, IBM went out there and sold everyone and their dog the stupid idea of a private internet. I remember the 90s. Um, and they took lots of money for it and they wasted millions from banks, but the reality is it's a dead-end idea. It was always a dead-end idea. It can only be a dead-end idea. The value of an inter interconnected network is interconnection. I see. Now, you are a busy man. You are giving this interview to educate the public. You are uh, probably writing already new patents for that are going to be shown to the world maybe in two or five years and uh, you're also probably working on a larger vision for the next 10 years and do you also work on um, improving the apps like Handcash and Sandbee or how what's your main focus right now? Uh, I focus on the areas I'm best I'm writing on sort of the legal the economic and the low-level stuff um, so My team and I are creating, like patenting and um, developing the SDK to allow other people to build better apps. Um, so the Handcash team are part of our uh, our group now. Um, so are Sentby. 
the reality is um, I'll help create tools that enable those guys to make better things because uh, I couldn't write a bloody front end to save myself. Um, people see my front ends and they laugh. <laughs> my front ends are ugly pieces of crap that should never be allowed to see the light of day. I've given up on that one. Um, don't worry, uh, I get it from uh, Shadows and, and other stuff like Daniel and uh, they bitch at my code generally, but when it comes to looking at my design, um, yeah, they just laugh. I see, I see. <laughs> and isn't it like a little bit overlapping, Sandby and Handcache, they do more or less the same thing. And Handcache has also the point of sale port part, but um, what's, what's the strategy there? Then we have um, sort of chat and the ability to add um, people by uh, WhatsApp type interface. Um, it's competition. Uh, I like many groups, uh, even when we have vested interests in the same ones. Um, well, that is by Samsung. And this tablet over here is by Lenovo, and my wife's got an iPhone. So, uh, although I'd get rid of the iPhone part of it and and put her on maybe a different Android one if I had a choice. I see. So, yeah, makes sense. And when I tested uh, the hand cache, it was uh, absolutely fast. And I think that's an innovation that r largely nobody acknowledged yet. The last time every journalist focused on the mm -hmm. crypto world was maybe in January 2018. And it wasn't available then, I think. And it's no, going no, to no. hit them as far as soon as they're going to focus again on this. Yep. Yeah, um, Money Button's another good one too. I mean, if you play with uh, Brian's uh, sort of swipe bar and things, I mean, I actually think that's quite cool. There are lots of other uses I can see for that. Um, if you tokenized uh, signing of receipts and invoices and um, uh, delivery dockets and things like that, um, we get rid of the dust limit, which happens next year and allow you to send um, a tokenized invoice that is completely private because it's um, encrypted between the parties and just swipe, done. What's the dust limit? Uh, the dust limit is the minimum amount you're allowed to send, which is, uh, I think, still 546 um, Satoshis. One thing for me as a YouTuber and my colleagues is also Patreon that might be one day be switched to the blockchain. Is it possible to do monthly subscriptions? Yes. Would that like involve me every pu uh, pushing a button every month or so or how does it? No, no, you'd actually have um, the ability to uh, pre-sign. Now this is where everyone goes wrong. They think the templates in Bitcoin are it. What we need are people creating new ones, new smart contracts, new formats. Um, that was something that really got killed off with um, Core, this whole standard idea. Now, as a, if you can think about the different um, SIG hash types. So um, I can take um, anyone can fund type transactions where uh, I have a signed transaction for the output, uh, but I don't care about the input. So in a uh, SIG hash format, I can, I can sign it so that I care about the output, but not the input. Now, if I'm Netflix, for instance, do you think I care um, where the, which coin gets paid to me? All I care about is that I get paid. So it, they don't care whether it comes from me on my wife's wallet or whatever else. So the truth of the matter is it is then simple to have a wallet that um, allows you to spend as it comes in, but pre-signed transactions. So um, now the reality there is I still have to make sure that I have the money. If I've got a Netflix account, and I've got a monthly payment and I'm in arrears and my bank account is negative, then the bank account will just stop funding my direct debits, right? The same thing happens with Bitcoin and I could have an automated um, system and uh, Mike Hearn did some good work with Lighthouse 
but that should be taken for all these things that you're saying. It can't be done, people say. Well, of course it can. You just need to have a different template. I need to have one where it's signed to you. Say I pay uh, oh, 0.1 um, Bitcoin every month. Or I can have a tokenized amount of US dollars that gets paid to you every month on Bitcoin. All these things are possible. But someone needs to just start thinking that they're, they're possible and allowable. And um, that's what removing the uh, sort of uh, ability to do non-standard scripts has um, removed. Now, that's not a technical problem with Bitcoin. Um, it, we're going to have non-standard scripts allowed on, on Bitcoin SV, the, the way it was originally. Um, the denial of service attack bit, um, well, that, that's the whole core philosophy of um, but the Raspberry Pis will break and we don't care. Yeah, you already said like there's always, there always has been uh, miners that dropped out of the network when it gets, gets unprofitable or when exactly. they when they get yeah. too old. Like every business. Um, sometimes you have a McDonald's pop up and sometimes they go out of business. Sometimes a corner store will pop up and sometimes they'll go out of business. Sometimes big stores like Amazon pop up and sometimes they go out of business. Um, so if you look at um, large mail order department stores of the past like Sears and um, they were huge. They were the Amazon of their day. So Sears had the Sears catalog and um, um, managed to distribute all around America and even around the world. And then the whole mall aspect of things changed and different shopping malls appeared. And Sears actually started losing market share. And um, now we've gone to a different model with Amazon. And you don't think that's going to be the last one. In, in 200 years' time, we're not going to only have Amazon and no other way of selling. Uh, if you think that, you're crazy. I mean, innovation, human, uh, the more humans are out there thinking about how to change things, the more this is going to change. And uh, there'll be new ways of doing Amazon, and they'll get replaced. So Amazon aren't here forever. They're just the best we have now. And they're trying and to the keep it up. Yeah, yeah. Fair things going to just keep happening. Um, new innovations are going to form new companies in all of these areas. If you're open to it, have you ever uh, watched a movie where you would say this movie inspired me, and it's part of the vision? Uh, no. Was there ever a book, uh, maybe by um, cypherpunk or cyberpunk book that inspired you? Uh, no, I've got other books that have inspired me. Adam Smith's uh, on moral sentiments, uh, Rose Serfton by Hayek, a lot of books by economists, um, things by Bastiat. Uh, got one over here that I quite like. I got uh, this one's very good. Nice simple book. Huh? Yeah. The way the world works. Yep. The way the world works. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, um, I do enjoy cypherpunk uh, type readings and cypherpunk readings. Um, I like Snow Crash and others, uh, but um, I wouldn't say they inspire me. They're usually rather dystopian for a start, and I'm not dystopian. So. I see. And now, for everybody who works a lot with computer devices, do you use uh, Windows, Linux, or Mac? Yes, yes, and no. I hate Macs. Uh, uh, Windows, because Windows is what most people use, so therefore uh, that's what one should on. Uh, Linux, I used to use or in, in some ways prefer because you have more control, but then most of the apps aren't on there, and um, this is the real world. So uh, for Mac, things like that, uh, has to be Linux because at the end of the day, uh, Windows just chews up memory too badly to run um, network simulations and things like that. So I think that's that's uh, interesting to just see a little bit more the personal side of the man that is attempting to build mm -hmm. a world current world money or the, a commodity ledger. Mm -hmm. Oh, I big too. Let's talk about the business end chain. 
Um, why did you choose mm -hmm. to uh, start it in London? It's kind of decentralized. You have employees all over the world. Uh, Australia is too far away and too difficult. Uh, although I used to work with the government in some aspects, uh, just the fact that I'm building things that you mentioned encryption or crypto and they're problematic. Australia's backwards. I mean, lots of nice people there and um, whatever else, but they're in the middle of nowhere, etc. Um, I have a family, so that takes part of it. We considered other area. Uh, we considered Edinburgh, um, but um, uh, I got fairly much a no way from the wife. Um, she's Singaporean and um, uh, she didn't want to live in Scotland because it's too cold. We visited there. It's very nice, but there'd be no way on earth for my wife to live in Scotland um, or anywhere that cold. She doesn't like cold. Um, we considered Canada for the same reason. Um, it was too cold. Um, other places in Europe, um, well, there are places that would have been nice and whatever else, but France at the moment is too socialist. Um, Germany, I can't speak a word of German. <laughs> um, so I'm not, not going to try. I've got enough... Uh, sort of learning language uh, with Chinese and trying to actually keep up on my French and trying not to sound like I'm murdering the language as my Frenchman told me. Um, <clears throat> so, um, yeah, London's a good place. It's financial capital of the world at one point in history, um, close to everything. Before Brexit um, sort of came about, it was uh, integrated into Europe. Um, we'll see how that works out over time. I see. That's the reason for London. And mm -hmm. now let's talk about, of course, Bitcoin SV has a very unique and innovative way of being a solution for uh, businesses. But there should be some competitors that you con consider like serious competitors that would fill the gap. If no, I don't. I don't consider any of them. I consider everyone's looked at what Core has been doing and the misunderstanding of Bitcoin. So I don't think we've got a competitor. Actually, I think what has happened is we've been running this way and I've spent 10 years running that way. And unfortunately, the race is that way for the finish line. But still, many people are still thinking the old way. Otherwise, Bitcoin SV would be already the uh, mainstream. So why if you... Well, I disagree there too. I mean, number one, we need to scale it. Uh, it's not going to be mainstream. Uh, until it's scaled. It then needs business solutions built. It needs applications built. Um, Hyperledger is a great scam. Um, it's a way of uh, flicking off uh, bureau services as a different name. I mean, that's what IBM has been doing since the 60s now. Um, they've, they've sold uh, DB2 and other type bureau services. That is the IBM sort of sham business where they lock you in and whatever else. Um, and it's no different. And it's still a dead end. It's a horrible, horrible database that will never work properly. Ethereum is a joke. Um, they've not understood that sharding is an MP hard uh, or MP complete problem, depending on which way you do it. Um, either way, it's a dead end. People think that Bitcoin's about decentralization. It's not. Decentralization is a tool. The reason why uh, Digicash and eCash and uh, DLP and others all went down the toilet was there's a single point of failure that um, basically took them down. Bitcoin's about competition. So um, Sean didn't understand that. And he wanted to run everything and, I mean, his whole trying to get a percentage of uh, Microsoft um, sort of that run it was just stupid. Um, uh, these other ones... Who's Sean? Uh, David Sean. Um, uh, inventor of DigiCash back in the first version, 93, came out with the company years later, uh, was running... Uh, Mark Twain Bank was issuing it. Uh, Deutsche Bank had started... Uh, using DigiCash. Or have you taken a look at the new Amazon managed blockchain service that they are coming up with? Is that kind of a competitor? It's a database. 
Okay. It's a database. So what? If you think a company can ever bring out a version of blockchain, then you don't understand blockchain. Not the first aspect of it. You can't. The key aspect is not a socialist circle jerk distributed everyone runs things. It is competition. It is corporate competition. It was always meant to end up in data centers. It was always meant to be big players investing lots and lots of money to form a hyper-connected central network. Now, uh, basically, something with a high centrality that all the nodes connect to. And when you say competition, do you mean inter-minor competition or inter-blockchain competition? Inter-minor. There's no such thing as inter-blockchain. Um, this ends as one or none. It's a binary decision. I understand. Uh, but but on the way to the one blockchain, there will be competition, of course. Eventually, but not much. I got annoyed with how things were going, and uh, I've spent the last half decade um, patenting about everything you need to actually make it work, including SPV. And you you said in the past Visa could or should uh, switch to Bitcoin SV eventually or in two years. They will. All these things come down to cost. I mean, uh, the, the entirety of transaction services, bureau services, and whatever else, all come down to cost. Now, Visa's rather insecure, highly insecure. Um, their network's garbage. Uh, they can't scale. Their, their peak scaling is in the order of um, uh, 60,000 transactions a second in the lab. Um, we're going to build up to uh, at least 1 million. Um, Steve wants to aim for 6 million um, in the next couple of years. Do you foresee a higher demand for Visa um, usage when the price is lower for Visa? Um, potentially, but Visa is not a competitor to Bitcoin. People don't get that. Visa um, isn't a money network, it's a credit network. And Bitcoin doesn't get rid of credit. People still want to buy things before they've earned them. I mean, this is the stupidity here, everyone running around going, Bitcoin makes you your own bank. No, it doesn't. It doesn't stop credit either. And you said they could shut down their fraud department if they switch to uh, Bitcoin SV. Maybe I'm a, a little bit picky when I say there will still be people that uh, get, take the money but won't deliver. So they might have still a fraud department. Oh, then you've fraud. got escrow. But uh, then you've got escrow contracts and other such things. Um, so that's all doable. Uh, if you want to have an escrowed money account uh, because you don't trust the um, the party, then go for it. Um, we've got uh, smart contract templates for that as well. The idea being that um, uh, payments can happen to every stage, uh, which can be tracked immutably. You can see the shipping information where your your thing is. You can know which shipping container that you happen to be in, not just its. Uh, in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, you could actually uh, monitor and track everything that's happening with your parcel. Yeah, and I, I agree. The um, the vision is really big, and there are is a huge potential. Especially you, at, I think at the Bangkok summit, you also talked about a client who might want to save real estate information, also including the three D oh. file of the real estate. So there there is a promise to do something that wasn't be. Able uh, wasn't possible to before, and also mm -hmm. you have uh, you have the clear evidence like before people needed yes. to put their official people like lawyers or um, mm -hmm. needed to put their stamp on stuff, and now Bitcoin can re replace this. No, Bitcoin doesn't replace that. That's where people keep going wrong. Lawyers will still put their stamp on it because that's not what so lawyers they do. do. They, they use a digital stamp then. Yes. Um, And under Unicetral and other law, uh, digital certificates are all valid. Uh, there is a reason why people use lawyers. You can do a property transaction without lawyers right now. You don't need to have it conveyed. You can actually uh, buy these things. If you're not taking a mortgage out, you don't need a lawyer at all. You don't need a solicitor. The reason you have conveyances and solicitors is to stop fraud. And the bank protects themselves by ensuring that if you take a mortgage out, all that's, that's done because the bank cares about being protected. Now, anyone who's smart will actually go out and 
pay the money to get those lawyers and everything like that to check. Um, because uh, even if it's on a blockchain, it doesn't stop people um, doing things. Now, the reality is you're still going to have stamp duty because government can charge you stamp duty. Um, you're still going to have to go through all the requirements um, that is there. It will be much simpler because conveyancing can now be digital. Um, and you can basically check that this was validly sold. Um, see on the thing five years ago there was a sale. Um, it was sold to um, two, tenant, uh, two tenants uh, as joint ownership, husband and wife. Um, they've divorced, but don't worry, it's okay because both of them have co-signed. That sort of thing. And we could already hear your Uh, the Bitcoin SV network or currency commodity ledger is government friendly. You also talked in the past about it. It makes government more honest, maybe more transparent. Correct. Yeah, I mean, this is what people don't get. Um, anonymity doesn't help anyone. It helps bad guys. The only people who benefit from a completely anonymous system are criminals, full stop. And that includes government criminals. I mean, what people seem to not understand in this world is criminals are people, government are people, and just like you get uh, good and bad people in the police, um, in banks, in um, ambulance services, in government, you get good and bad people everywhere. It's not going to be solved because blockchain. Another point I think where many people go wrong is that it's not either or, um, a currency for people with microtransactions, uh, payment on the browser, mm -hmm. it's not and a commodity ledger, it's both. And what you, and it's already a fully working microtransaction and full payment uh, mm -hmm. instant transaction currency. And what you're adding now is the commodity ledger and that's going to need the scale, but well, it's also going to finance uh, all the You're not adding money. the commodity ledger, we're repairing it. It was there in the first days of Bitcoin. It was always designed this way. It's just a few people like Core and whatever else came out with this idea that blockchains don't scale. We can't put things on it because they had the wacky concept that everyone has to run a node. Um, so I'm not sure if that was intentional to wreck everything or just stupidity, but um, nothing was ever meant to be run that way. The truth of the matter is, Companies compete, they fight to have bigger data centers, more efficiency, um, allowing people to actually um, have a distributed network of machines that connect, allowing peer-to-peer -peer communications, which isn't the blockchain. That's where people go wrong. Peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash is you and I exchange a transaction and that network over there settles it. The peer-to-peer -peer part of Bitcoin is people. It's the bit that one of the first things that Core took out of the network was the peer-to-peer. -peer. Bitcoin Core is not peer-to-peer. -peer. And is the the reason that Bitcoin Core kind of derailed while trying to uh, go to larger scale with Bitcoin, is that the reason why you're also taking a more active role since about two years? Uh, unfortunately, yes. Um, it's... Um, Uh, if I don't sort of guide this, people come up with all these silly socialist, um, and I'll say socialist because every anarchist is really a socialist. Um, there's no such thing as an anarcho-capitalist because capitalism requires law. So by definition, you can't be anarcho-capitalist. You're a socialist. So uh, call it whatever you want. There is one way Bitcoin works. It is capitalism. And that does not mean all these other things that people get wrong. It is not mercantilist. It is not um, exploitative. Capitalism is not about um, state control. It is about free trade, uh, open trade. And that doesn't mean that um, you have no market controls. Um, it means that you have a system, as Hayek um, said, that is controlled and regulated, as Adam Smith um, sort of said where government stays out of the um, the economy but regulates its flow. Yeah, I myself call myself a minarchist just for for in, for information. I'm, I'm happy with that one. Um, I prefer as small a government as works feasibly. 
which isn't zero. Um, you need police. You can't have a scenario where people say, oh, everyone can hire their own police. It doesn't work. People have tried that one. Um, in uh, Victorian England, there was, a, and also in America too, in Boston, uh, there was a stage where people had um, competing fire brigades. Same thing happened in Rome, actually. Uh, Croesus made his money because of um, fire brigades. And what would happen is the two fire brigades would come and fight. And um, it was a mess. Very anarchist. And what would generally happen is the whole neighbourhood would burn down and no one got their fires put out. And then the firemen would run in and um, uh, basically steal everything before it burnt. I see. So that's the economic uh, argument to have mm -hmm. a law and to cooperate, to be government friendly, I understand. Another um, question that is probably... so much government friendly, it's, it's not aggressive government. Mm -hmm. It's um, enabling services that help everyone. And um, it's not saying government friendly because if you're a corrupt government, Bitcoin's your worst enemy. I get that. Another economic question probably is, um, at, at one point in time, you m must have made the decision to invest your time into a proof of work coin instead of a, a proof of stake coin. Can you explain what? Yes. Why? I mean, um, there's no such thing as a proof of stake coin. So why would I waste any time thinking about it? I mean, I've wasted too much time writing about it with um, uh, basically showing that it's an oligarchical system, um, uh, pointing out that you can't shard it um, because it's actually the only way you can shard it is to have one group dictate what happens. Um, as soon as you have a 51% control by one group who gets to set the rules, um, unlike Bitcoin where it's competing for um, keeping the rules the same, then you end up with a scenario where, well, I've got 80% of the money. How about I spend 30% and then vote myself more money so that I have 80% again? That's part of how um, proof of stake works. It's an infinitely inflatable system um, designed to keep the maximum uh, holders as maximum holders. It starts as a cartel because there will always be a scenario where the top 50% uh, vote themselves to be the top 80%, in which case you end up now with the um, new top 50% vote themselves um, more or even potentially uh, one of those um, happens to be close to the 50%. Um, and eventually you end up with one single party who controls everything. And you think it's unlikely that this is going to happen with miners, that um, somebody acquires 51% of all miners and then rewrites the rules? 1% is not an attack. That's, I mean, th this is the thing that everyone got wrong. 51% attack uh, means you haven't read the white paper. If you read the white paper, there's this section that says miners are incentivized to follow the best chain, even if they're an attacker. Now, part of that comes into scale. And when we're having people split off like ABC did and B BTC did before, um, and they're changing the rules, they're not, they're creating something completely different. So uh, what they're doing is not forking Bitcoin. They are splitting and starting a new network that has different rules um, and airdrops everyone who was there before and basically lies that it's a change. So BTC radically altering the system um, or ABC radically altering the system, adding new opcodes, making it incompatible, uh, that basically isn't forking the chain and competing or whatever else. It is creating a completely new chain. Now, that's only possible because of two reasons. One, scale. We have small blocks. And two, scale. We're not used much. 
if you end up scaling, none of this becomes possible. Now, take, for instance, if you have tokens and other things on the blockchain. If people have a housing registry and it's stored, you can't fork. Think of what happens if you fork. What is the real housing registry? You don't have two copies of your house. It's this wacky, stupid, baby, kitty idea that people like Ethereum guys have who haven't woken up and realized that they're out of play school yet and think that you can make everything digital. This is a real world. It's not Ready Player One. This is the real world. This house exists and it doesn't matter whether the title's electronic or not. There's only one. There will only be one. One problem I have when I explain to friends and relatives Bitcoin is still that they feel guilty for, for using so much uh, energy. And uh, do you, have you ever found a short way to explain to them why it's important? I mean, I get it. But it takes me like five minutes yeah. to explain Stop to them. being stupid and realizing that you're fucking spending more money um, in everything you do than Bitcoin. Ask them if they feel guilty when they do a Google search. Um, do you feel guilty when you use WhatsApp? I mean, and get past this fucking socialist bullshit. And I'm going to say this this way. With this whole wanky climate fucking shit, the climate of Earth has changed four degrees up, eight degrees down um, in the last Ice Age period. It was two, uh, 200 years ago, it was much colder and then much warmer. And then 400 years ago, we had a mini Ice Age. Um, stop the bullshit, okay? Um, I don't really give a shit about this proven science bit uh, because... I've read it, I've worked on teams, it's not bloody proven science. Next, if you want to fix it, it's called economics. The reality of all this is bloody do more, have more people, pull them out of their freaking bootstraps, stop this bloody Sierra Club bullshit where you're aiming to kill people. You're a fucking murderer. That's what I'm going to tell them. You're a fucking want to be murderer. You kill people. Because every person who doesn't get access to electricity, doesn't get power, doesn't get that growth, is someone who has a shorter life. Okay, so this whole idea, stop wanking about with these stupid, bloody, bullshit, rhetorical, asshole questions and wake up and smell the fact that you're using Google, you hypocritical little shit. Okay. That's what you told okay, them. I'm going to try that. I have a friend who is still skeptical about Bitcoin SV and I want to um, talk about some of his skepticism. One is Bitcoin SV might not be uh, horizontally scalable. Oh, it's always been bloody scalable. It's a whole lot of wanky stuff about, oh, we can't run it on my Raspberry Pi on my laptop. Look up the, the post about um, everything ends up on um, data centers. It does. That's the way the world works. So to works. a layperson like me, uh, the question is, is the mining software already running on multi-core or on a single core? Mining software, th 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 that's the first problem. That's irrelevant. Miners grind through hashes. A miner doesn't give a rat whether it's a one meg or a 100 zig uh, uh, buddy, um, zeta byte block. Miners don't care. What you need to do is you need to take all those transactions and run them in parallel and um, then communicate that. Um, as for the Chinese firewall, um, already got a solution for that. And now I'm not, the patent's still pending So and uh, going through certain uh, write-up stages, so I won't discuss it, but all I can say is um, the Chinese firewall's not a problem. If we have... Um, 100 petabyte blocks tomorrow, um, the Chinese firewall is that. The propagation, uh, this, this whole idea of propagation is people who have never run big networks. Um, when I worked in the Australian Stock Exchange 
um, in the 90s, we were doing higher volume in a multicast distributed network. And that's the 90s on VAX machines. Yeah, there, there's the lack of imagination so, and the lack of full comprehension of Moore's law. Also a lack of comprehension of people who haven't run on real networks. That's the problem with this anarchist bent here. Uh, we don't have people who have run on bank networks or military networks or anything like this. Um, I've got six petabytes downstairs. I ran a network with over 100 petabytes uh, a couple of years ago. Um, my processing power uh, sort of a couple of years ago was in the order of uh, 112,000 um, CPU cores. So... Um, Welcome yeah. to the real world. Although I understand that it was appealing at the fir at first when your own PC was running it, but it's still appealing to hold your own key. So that's the main selling point to the individuals now that are uh, technologically forward and interested in progress. They hold their own keys. Unfortunately, they cannot run the whole software anymore on their computer. As long as they do it right. The problem is, again, um, they'd be doing is they should be holding a key and never signing with that key. They should use a hierarchical single-use key every time and throw it away. So use a key that can even be put on a CA and certified and all that stuff, proving that it's you, and then protect your identity by having a simple uh, relationship between um, uh, sort of two additive um, uh, ECs. DSA keys equal a new key, sign with that, and then throw it away. Single use key. The whole Bitcoin security model uh, and privacy model is based on you don't reuse your keys. And I think that's already implemented in and handcash. Yet, one does. Them, correct. Correct. Yes. You don't need to worry about knowing your keys because, well, why do you want to know your keys? It's, that's you have a new key every time and then you can't trace me if you don't know what whether it's me or a store how do you trace me so if i have amazon using a separate key for every customer for every sale and you don't know whether it's my key as change or amazon's key um how the hell are you ever going to track that yeah that makes sense and it's, it's of course you always explain them if the police finds somebody who did illicit business, they have to do it the old school way. They have to go to the shop. They have to go. Mm -hmm. They get have to track down the phone of the thief, or or, and then they can still track yeah. his his uh, transactions. But they cannot tr they they cannot just mm. download the whole blockchain and see what everybody is doing. So there is uh, the certain amount of privacy for the individual compared to the government. Exactly. So when I um, joined the military in the 90s and uh, when my uncle and other people in my family were doing things, um, there was, a, I mean, it wasn't this big push for um, metadata. Um, people used to do what is human, human intelligence. And um, you would actually go out there and you'd investigate things and you would get records and analysts would, go through bank records and you'd follow the money trail and all this other sort of stuff. Now, honestly, we're lazy. Um, the NSA metadata bit is lazy. It gives bad, shitty results. Um, this is what everyone says, oh, look what we've done. Um, I actually think the results are shittier. Um, the way that it used to work came up with more prosecutions. It stopped more drug deals and did whatever else um it actually helped better policing yeah but thank yeah. you Safe I, i'm time. not an expert in policing but i'm happy to hear that uh, the policing work would improve and um i'm i'm interested to hear your version for me about the 30 megabyte block propagation problem my explanation is you have to focus on the miners that provide 90 percent of the hash power instead of the 10% miners that have the oldest hardware, the oldest versions running, that take the longest. Exactly. Um, well, um, I mean, 
other than problems with the software that we're removing, um, like randomized delay times, uh, maximum connections, all this other stuff. Uh, we don't have a 30 meg block propagation problem. Uh, what uh, some people said about all these so-called orphans and whatever, um, I don't know where they were coming from because they're not there. Um, so this 5% orphan load of crap. It's, it's always great how these people unscientifically just make up a story uh, that in an immutable blockchain you can easily prove and yet they never do. Yeah, I also didn't see the, the data for that claim. I, I just read it on Twitter and that's one part of the problem in... Uh... That's the whole point, isn't it? There's never any proof of double spins. There's, I mean, uh, I put out bounties, yet no one's taken them. Uh, myself and others, um, back when the selfish mining lie and fraud was out there, uh, and people were taking it seriously, um, the total was, I think, just under 1,500 Bitcoin, as in combined BTC, BCH, SV before the split Bitcoin, were put out. I think the total value, like 11 million pounds, and we even did a whole lot of things for the author of the paper, um, if he does this experiment and all the rest, yet, oh, academic, he would never do that. Right. Uh, I'm being an academic. Academics are freaking greedy little pricks when it comes to getting money. Uh, if someone offers to prove your um, uh, your paper right, there's not an academic on earth who isn't a fraud uh, who wouldn't actually take it up. So um, a number, like um, I think it was Cryptartica, uh, myself and others have all offered uh, bounties on, um, on double spend, uh, yet no one ever taken us up on them. Uh, I actually offered that anyone ever gets double spent uh, following a proper procedure in a, uh, a store, a merchant, I'll pay for it personally. And yet, yet no one's ever taken it up. No one's come back to me and said, um, uh, here's the proof, um, away we go. Of course, the other part is I'll, fo I'll file a fraud claim. Um, uh, so when you defraud that merchant, I'll make sure that... Um, uh, the fraud claims filed, but go for it. I'm happy for you to try. I'll, I'll pay the merchant for any loss.